Welcome, everyone, back to Space Engineers. Today, we are going to be creating our first small vehicle, which will probably be a rover. We are also going to go out searching for ores so that we can create upgraded tools and more complex materials. But before we can do all that, we need to destroy our respawn pod. So, let's just jump straight into it. now clearly destroyed we now need to figure out how we want to find ores there are two ways in space engineers to find ore the first one is with your hand tools and the other is with this cool block called the ore detector so now the ore detector it requires power and generally you would put it on a craft we can just slap it onto our station but it's honestly kind of better to put on a small craft so that it's mobile. So I think at first we're going to probably search around with our hand drill so that we can find various ore deposits. But then very quickly we'll build up a small craft so that we can drive around, we can haul around more, and just make the process faster. All right. Now that we're ready to search for ore, what you first kind of want to do, especially if you're on an ice lake, is just fly up. Fly up and look around. Now, you can see the ore deposits from the sky because ore deposits are like, they have darker patches of gray intermixed with them. So it's very clear on the ice. If we just look around for a bit, we will... Is this an ore patch? Looks like it. Yes, this is an ore patch. But right now, it seems that the ore is too deep for us to notice. So, let's just dig down, and eventually we will probably detect ore. Alright, so after digging a few meters, I noticed that there's some nickel down here. Let's see it. this nickel? No. Here it is. Here is nickel. So what we can do is we can just hand mine it for now. You can get a mining ship, which I highly recommend doing, and I will be showing you how to make very soon, actually. Um, but you can just hand mine this for now, and then manually pick it up. We just gotta pick up a little bit more. And then after you do your first kind of excavation of a place, I recommend just going up here because usually there's more than one ore in one place. I recommend just going here, going to your GPS tab, and then hitting new from current position. What we can do is we can just remove that and say, um, we are on Earth, and this is Nickel, so I'll just abbreviate it, N-I. So now we always have a GPS, and I, we know that on Earth, or at least this Earth-like planet, we have Nickel. So now if we fly back to base and throw our Nickel ore into our basic refinery, it won't work very fast because it's just a basic refinery but it'll give us a lot more nickel than stone usually does. See if we go in here, basic refinery, 
We've got like 10 now. It produces it very quickly and doesn't use up a whole lot of it. So it's it's definitely worth going out and finding ore rather than just mining stone forever. All right, so after we discovered that nickel patch, I'm just gonna jump into a quick little time lapse uh, where we find most of all the other ores on this ice lake and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoyed that time lapse, but now that we've marked out various ore deposits around, um, as you saw, we can only hold around 3,000-ish ore, which isn't a lot, you know, this thing is almost already, you know, finished producing and refining all of it. So what we need is something to haul around all of our stuff for us, and that is why I like rovers. So rovers are probably one of the most, they are the most simple um, craft in the game because all they do is run on land, um, which means they can get a little bit buggy at times, but they're also very, very cheap to make and maintain. So now if we just search through progression, we see we need to make a landing gear before we can unlock tires. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but if it's what the devs say, then it's what the devs say. And you have to fully weld it up. So we need construction components and motors. Motors, construction components. Let's put like a hundred of those in there. Alright. So now that we have the wheel blocks, we can start working on our rover. So when you're making a wheel, wheeled vehicle, you need the suspension left and the suspension right. If you just decide to ignore all of that, then your car won't drive. At least, um, not in ways you want it to. So now if we start designing, we kind of want an axle, so let's just do something like this. Like that. So it's, it's a decently long you know, column. I also recommend leaving this till after to weld up, um, just in case you want to do any changes to it. And I like to make it three thick so that you can mostly protect anything you put on it and it won't scrape the ground. Because when you put stuff, like if you want to store a bunch of stuff on this, it will also pull the the entire craft closer to the ground because you know gravity now I think I'm gonna make a three-wheeler here I'm just gotta add another layer right there I think I'm gonna make a three-wheeler here because kinda of the more wheels the more stable it is and also it just looks more even I guess um, but here we go Alright, now that we have our basic shape, we can start putting on our wheels. So if it's on the left, we just simply put our wheels on... Oh, that's another problem with uh, building wheeled vehicles. They're a bit janky in terms of, yeah, of how they're placed. I wish 
there was more of an indication of how the wheel would spawn, but there really isn't, so let's just rotate that. I think that should be good. Yep. So when you're placing these, make sure you have the thicker part on the bottom, just to make sure that your wheel is placed appropriately. So now that we've done the left, we gotta switch to the right wheels. Thick part is not at the bottom. There we go. There we go. And there we go. So now we have our basic shape. We still need a cockpit and power and um, a few cargo containers too. So cargo, small cargo container. We're probably gonna put maybe just two medium cargo containers on this yeah that seems good and then we also need some batteries I recommend using the large batteries because the small batteries really can't contain much power at all so we also need interior plates do we have it yeah we do I'm also gonna just gonna start production of a few more because we kind of need a lot of them all right, and now cockpit. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try and avoid some of the DLC box because not everyone has the DLC. So we're just gonna use the normal cockpit. And if we do like this, we have that on the front. We can have two cargo containers. Then I might even extend this back one more just so there's like a uh, actually no we can just do something like this like a little wrap around to go around it to make sure nothing hits our uh, our battery like that because remember if the battery is you know broken then we have some pretty major problems so here we go, we could just weld this up now, I'll probably do a time lapse for this, but this is mostly a finished design. The only thing I think that we're going to add is some solar panels, just to give it some uh, passive energy regeneration. So to do that, I think I'm going to put like a sort of roof on this, yeah I know, a car with a roof, um, like this. All right, and then just simply bring it across. Like this. And the only reason I'm adding these solar panels is because any passive power regeneration on this thing is pretty good because wheels don't actually use up a lot of power. So it might actually even be self-sufficient with just two wheels or uh, two solar panels, which would be great because that means we don't have to create anything to like charge this thing. So now that we have all that outlined, we can just do this. And I like to keep my build symmetric, so I'm probably just gonna keep it like that. Um, Put it like there, I guess. That should be fine. All right. Now we can do the same over here. Um, it's there. We go. Something like that. Is that aligned? Yep, that is aligned. Um. So now with all that placed, we will jump into a welding time lapse.
now that we've finished welding up our rover, we can now set up its settings, which let it work much better than it defaultedly does. So if we hit K for PC users, and then we go to our wheels, you can click on it and then shift click, and it selects all of these, and then go up here to block group, and name it something along the lines of wheels. You can name it whatever you want, but uh, I recommend doing it reasonably naming it. So now if we go here, I like to leave almost all these settings, you know, fairly, fairly default, but speed limit, I recommend cranking that down. Um, the only reason I recommend doing that is because rovers in this game are not very safe to drive at high speeds. <laughs> They can sometimes end with you dying horribly. But now if we go to uh, hit G and you go to this block menu, but it's the block menu for the rover. Uh, I also recommend drive, dragging your battery onto enable auto. So what auto does is it auto discharges power while also regaining. What I recommend doing when you're parked is just to, uh, is to change your battery here to recharge on off and then if you hit if you change it to recharge you waste no power and all your battery does is charge and then you can just hit one again and it goes back to auto so now let's test out our little rover so as you can see it's a little bit bumpy because we're on ice it's probably going to be a little bit more slippery and depending on your location it can be not very great so right here we can switch this if we want to be stuck to the ground more. Let's just turn up our friction a little bit more. A little bit more friction, let's see how it drives now. Yeah, it's a little bit better. See? And because this is a three-wheeled vehicle, it is fairly stable. So now let's go try and pick up a load of ore. What is over there? Nickel and iron. Sure. This is also a pretty fast way to travel if you don't have hydrogen or are not near an ice lake. Alright, now that I've mined for a little bit and uh, filled up most of these to about two thirds full, we've got like five and a half thousand iron here, about two and three fourths of a thousand here, and a few, a bunch of cobalt. Um, let's see how it handles now. So the first thing you're going to kind of notice is that it, it's a bit more skittish. But as this is a three-wheeling vehicle, it is a lot more stable than if you only had two wheels. I tried to do this with two wheels, and it, it's just a nightmare to control. So now if we drive back to base, also another good reason is that because it can hold so much more ore, you can push out materials a lot faster. Alright, as we near the base, the reason why I picked up so much iron is because iron is definitely the primary resource in everything. Um, but I've, I've already told you guys what cobal cobalt is useful, but it's also used in um, atmospheric thrusters, which is what we're going to kind of get into next episode is how to build an atmospheric miner. Oh, oh god. You know what? Uh, that was perfect parking. Uh, perfectly intended. Alright. <laughs> now that we have... We made it back to base. We can just go over here. Into our basic refinery. Yeah, as you can see, 2.71k is all we can carry, but we've got like... four inventories of stuff here. And it's not even filled to capacity. It's why I really like having rovers early game. Because they're just such great haulers. How much iron do we have right now? As Look how fast it's you know processing it. And this is only the basic refinery. There's one more tier up. Which you can also put speed upgrades. Yield upgrades. Which give more stuff. But we're going to get into that in a later video. Probably actually seeing how fast our resources are going up. Uh, probably maybe next video. We'll do some industry stuff. But let's just throw it in there. It'll auto transfer from the small cargo container into there. So we can just kind of transfer the, all of this over. 
like this. Cobalt. Also, ores like cobalt take longer to process than iron because I guess they're more rare or something. It's just a feature that they have. But they, once you finish processing this, it'll process that. So now, before I end off this episode, I think I'm just going to throw on a quick ore detector. Probably like, it doesn't really matter where you place it as long as it's kind of close to the ground. I'll just put it here. So we just need a few components. Let's take those. And steel plate. And I think it wanted computers. Yes, it did want computers. So now we have this. And if we hop into our vehicle, you can see it's detecting ice. And that's without our drill out. So that's one thing. I'm also going to add a few spotlights just so you guys can see better at night. that rotate it there we go large steel tube and interior plate is all we need interior plate just need one more large steel tube all right now we can do this and we just need that large steel tube all right there we go so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please like and comment and if you want to see more of this kind of stuff uh subscribe um but down in the description let me know if you you know if you like these time lapses i'm trying out a new style and i enjoy it if you know if you guys like it so um leave your opinions down below and uh, have a great day.